Good morning. Good, morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this very special Sunday. This is the day we remember all of the Edge Hill Saints and also a day that Beth Richardson has blessed us with her presence to be our preacher and we'll be doing a, uh, a farewell litany for Beth as she has been ordained an elder in the Mountain Sky Conference of the United Methodist Church. Um, Beth has come a long way since those first days that she was here at Edge Hill. She is now a um, deeply spiritual leader, leader uh, actually globally. She's um, Director of Worship Life and Dean of the Upper Room Chapel. Dean Emeritus. Dean Emeritus. She's now retired. And um, that gives her a global presence. So she All is right. quite, a, um, quite a leader for us and everyone here loves and is proud of Beth. This um, past week we housed two more asylum seekers for two nights over in the 1414 building upstairs. We've had eight guests with us in the last month. So the, um, the stream of asylum seeking hopefully immigrants are, is, is really opened up and there's been a lot of activity. Yes, Ron? How are we doing for furniture for them, like uh, couches they, they can sleep on or whatever? We, we've got the room at the end cots, so they're, they're fine. Yeah. They're, all, they're all short term, like one or two nights so far, so that's all, all going well. But this week, on Wednesday night, there is an event at Scarrett Bennett titled Immigration Activism, Advocacy, and Art. And the hopes are Edge Hill can be represented. It's, a, it's at the exact same time as our charge conference, so I can't be there. But uh, all of our volunteers that served so faithfully in 2019 in the hospitality ministries at the bus stations, uh, we'd like to have as many people as possible there because it's also where we're connecting with other uh, communities of faith to share in this work. What time is it going to be? Six o'clock, Scarrett Bennett. And there's a link in this week's email on how to register for that. So you, ever, you know, I want to encourage people to do that. In 2019, we housed um, right at 60 people during that year uh, before Donald Trump shut down the, uh, or he put in place the stay in Mexico ruling. So would-be asylum seekers had to wait there until their court date came. So this has been primarily Venezuela. There's been a flood of immigrants from Venezuela. And the Biden administration has recently closed the border to Venezuelan asylum seekers because there were too many. So we put a stay in Venezuela ruling in place. Um, but until all of the immigration centers, the detention centers are empty, we're going to be getting a flood of Venezuelans. And they are, you know, so far, 100% delightfully upbeat and faithful people. So it's been, it's been fun. That's Wednesday night at 6 o'clock. Um, Sunday school class that's coming up um, today is Lectio Divina on today's scripture reading. Thank you, Barbara. And the next two weeks will be Paul Slentz leading us. No, Dorothy, what do we have? Next Sunday is a... Social hour and celebration of Woodley. Woodley's 90th birthday celebration. Right. Thank you, Dorothy. That one slipped, slipped my mind. Uh, wonderful. So Paul is going to be the two weeks after that doing creation care. Perfect, perfect. 
Does anyone else have an announcement they would like to make? Dean. The candles on the uh, worship center, the five are in memory of Judy, Margaret, Ed, and Paul, and Jim. The center candle that is lit right now is in memory of all the people who have died because of violence. <coughs> you begin to realize there's no safe place to go. Violence by guns have happened in churches, in synagogues, in mosques, in grocery stores, in schools, Christmas parades. No matter where you go, this is happening in our time. And we need to remember these people who have been victims and have died. So how are we going to do that? The, we'll, we'll give instructions on the All Saints litany when we start. So I was late for choir this morning because I got wrapped up watching a video of, uh, I thought I was going to get here at 9 o'clock, but it was 9.30. Uh, I was here with John Stewart and Corey Booker. Everybody's got to look up this. I'm, I'm <laughs> wonderful. And Corey said, if America doesn't break your heart every day, you don't love America enough. And he's talking about all the poverty and all the kids who are, uh, have lead in the pipes feeding their house and all these things. And so I thought about action. And I asked John this morning if I can talk to the pastors of the black churches in our neighborhood if this week we could just devote to knocking on doors, just put everything aside, just one week, and as many of us as possible join up with black partners and black churches, and we'll just knock on doors all over the neighborhood. And by the way, this was John Stewart's show, Dismantling Racism is Patriotic. I just love the way that fits into what we're doing. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Roland. Any other announcement? Rachel. Hi. Um, this coming Saturday, there's a really cool event called Built on Faith. <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, this Saturday, there's a really cool event called Built on Faith Congregations and Affordable Housing Summit. And it's all about how um, faith congregations and the, the unique things that we have to offer the, the affordable housing effort and movement in Nashville, and it's um, co-sponsored by NOAA, um, so some of y'all who are involved with NOAA may have heard about it, um, but it's also, I'm really excited because it's co-sponsored by um, Workers' Dignity, which I love, and it's really cool to see Workers' Dignity and NOAA working together, and it's happening at Belmont United Methodist Church, so um, uh, look for, I, I don't know if you're able to get it in a newsletter, but, um, I can get it out this week. Okay, thank you. Um, they want you to register ahead of time. It's from, oh, it's like all day, 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m., but you can probably go to just parts of it. I'll be there. Let me know if you're going to be there. I'm really excited for it. 8.30 a.m., Belmont United Methodist Church, a homelessness, um, what's the title? Affordable. Um, affordable, affordable Housing Summit. Yes. Yes, with a, a number of wonderful agencies collaborating to put this on to get some more grassroots effort to... 8.30 a.m. on Monday. Saturday, next Saturday. Bill, welcome back, Bill. I just wanted to announce that I'm back. <laughs> Bill! Not had a fun time with his knee replacement, but he is a tough, tough old bird. He's back with us. Thank you. With that, let's quiet our minds, open our hearts, and worship together.
I invite you now to join me in our call to worship. God of all the saints, God of mercy, love, and power, we have come to praise you today. God, cleanse our hearts and cast out our unholy fear. Open our lips with the song of your saints. Enlighten our minds with your forgiveness. And set our bodies dancing to the beat of your spirit. Let's now stand as you are able and join our voices together to sing hymn number 333, I'm Going to Sing. I invite you to hear these words of assurance. When we confess our sinful ways, God abundantly pardons. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are all forgiven. Glory to God. By 
one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue the things that make for peace and build up our common life. <coughs> our beautiful unison prayer that we prayed was written by Judy Chicago. It's a prayer poem, and she's an activist and feminist artist and one of Time Magazine's 100 most influential people in the world in 2018. Um, it's just a, a beautiful prayer and sentiment, so I, I just was happy to have that in our service today. Judy Chicago. <coughs> Let us pray. Loving and living God, on this special day, we give thanks to you for the gift of eternal, life eternal, and for all those having served you well now rest from their labors. We thank you for all the saints, both remembered and forgotten, and for those dear souls most precious to us. Today we give thanks for those who during the last 12 months had died and enter into your loving presence. Judy Beiswinger, Margaret Howell, Ed Stant, Paul Stevens, and Jim Zralick. We bless you for their life and love and rejoice for them knowing that all is well. Today we are mindful of all those souls who have gone on ahead of us. Teach us and all disciples, disciples of every race and place, to follow their example as best we can, to feed the poor in body or in spirit, to support and comfort the mourners and the repentant, to encourage the meek and stand with them in crisis, to cherish and learn from the merciful, to be humbled by and stand with the peacemakers. Let us clearly recognize what it means to be called children of God and to know we are to be your saints, not because of our own ability or righteousness or our own strength, but simply by the call and the healing holiness of our teacher, Jesus Christ. Amen. I now invite you to stand as you are able in body or in spirit, and let's sing, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. It's number 400 in the faith we sing. <clears throat>
Hear these words from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 6. Then Jesus looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you and revile you and defame you on, the, the, on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. The word of life. Thanks be to God. Thanks. And hear these words from the world, from Dr. Barbara Holmes, a theologian and womanist. A world without ancestors is lonely. I'm so grateful for the elders in my family who introduced me to the continuums in life. It matters how we understand our sojourn in this reality. If we consider our lives to be comprised of segments separated by a dash that encompasses birth and death dates, we will be inconsolable when trauma truncates our realities and delays our destinations. But if we consider ourselves to be part of a continuum of life that does not end with death, but transitions to a life after life, our perceptions can change. The community of the ancestors already inhabiting the life beyond life keep in constant contact with us. Mm. The word of life, thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never? saying that's just too many. <laughs> this third text is the summons by John Bell and Graham Mall, and it is a, a song that has been around a while that I, it just calls to me and I hear the Holy One calling to me, calling to us, wooing me to follow no matter what that means. Yeah. And as I stand here today surrounded by saints, um, family and friends, who are part of that great heavenly choir, the saints who have guided and challenged us to create God's kingdom here on earth, the saints of Edgehill, you all 
saints, and those who planted this church in this neighborhood way back in the 60s, when it was rare for black and white folks to worship together. I'm so grateful for John giving me the chance to share with you. It's Elders don't have to leave a church, but I've been here so long that I needed to mark this transition um, and, and, and to celebrate the gifts that you all have given to me. This community, these Christians who seek to live as Jesus people, as followers of the one who faced the crowd and preached to them radical ideas, we remember and we celebrate today the, the saints who founded this congregation, Bill Barnes, Marjorie, and Bill Campbell, Ed Stant. Who are the founders whose names you remember? Alice Cobb. Alice Cobb. Carol Feeney. Carol Feeney. Red Cloud. Red Cloud. So I arrived in Edge one Sunday in September of 1979. At the end of August, I had loaded up my white Volkswagen Rabbit with all of my possessions, and I moved here to Nashville, Tennessee from Oklahoma to work for Appalachia Service Project. It was my first full-time job out of college, and I heard about Etchell from one of the other staff people, and I came to this church. We were still in the garage, which is, the footprint is still here. It's halfway up the room. And then, of course, the ceiling was only where that board is. And right back there was the, the stairs to the kitchen, and that was where all the kids and teenagers would sit on the steps. There, there's some folks who used to do that here in this room. <laughs> on the wall behind the preacher's lectern, that first Sunday I was here, there was a crayon drawing of God done by one of the grade, grade school age kids of Janet Wolfe. The drawing was a picture of God, and it was half woman, half man, half white, half black. So it's a binary drawing by today's standards, but it was revolutionary to me. In this place, even children knew and could lead the congregation to say that everyone is welcome here. Until that point, I had been a member of whatever church my dad was pastoring there in Oklahoma. And, and I, had, I had started breaking out of that culture in summers, working with people, the poor people of Eastern Kentucky and Tennessee. And I felt called to work for God. But I had never seen a local congregation living out that calling till I came into this place. And so coming here was, was amazing, exciting, mind-blowing. And it wasn't long until I joined the church and I probably offered a gift of song to the congregation on the Sunday that I joined. And in this room, we saw the great banquet lived out here on earth. All kinds of people in this place. People gathered around Christ's table. Young and old, people of different races and countries and economic statuses. People who rolled their wheelchair over here on Sunday morning, probably maybe not always the sidewalk, but came down the street and rolled into this room and worshiped together. And then there were gay Christians here. I had never met one before. People just like me. Edcho people heard and lived and continue to hear and live out the calling from our song. Will you leave yourself behind if I call your name? Will you care for cruel and kind? Will you risk the hostile stare should your life attract or scare? Will you let me answer prayer in you? Being a part of Edgehill meant being on the edge. I remember riding the bus over here one Sunday morning, and I told one of my fellow riders that I was heading to Sunday worship at Edgehill, and they said, isn't that that church where they smoke pot? <laughs> <laughs> Becoming a part of this community taught me and formed me and shaped me, and I wonder how you've been formed 
by this community. And we remember and we celebrate those saints from those early days, Alice Cobb, Elizabeth Parker, Alice Kowser, Gloria Crutcher, other names from the early days. The Buchan, the Buchanan sisters. Mm -hmm. yes. Will you let the blinded see if I but call your name? Will you set the prisoners free and never be the same? Will you kiss the leper clean and do such as this unseen and admit to what I mean in you and you in me? The members of Etchell take seriously the call of Jesus to be in ministry to and with those who are oppressed. An integrated space in a time when it was rare for white and black folks to worship together. This church was founded in 1966. That was just one year before the march that had been Bloody Sunday when law enforcement in Selma, Alabama attacked a group of marchers. And then later that year, in August, President Johnson signed into law the Voting Rights Act. So there was a lot going on in those days. And those, that small group of people came together and formed a church and bought this house and met in the living room. And people started coming. And then it seemed like all kind of new ministries just kept popping out of this church. <laughs> to meet the needs that they saw, to follow God's call, to be God's hands and heart in the world. While other people were protesting the integration of Nashville schools, members of Etchell were greeting students as they got off the bus with warm welcomes and pencils. Some of the organizations that were founded out of this church, MANA, Tennessee Hunger Coalition, Luke 14, 12. The Victim Offender Reconciliation Program. All right. Project Return. Uh, W.O. Smith Music School. And it, the list just goes on. I, I didn't want to name them all because I know I was going to forget some. Don't forget in 1969, the caravan parked here and it shall welcome Stephen Gaskin and the farm. Uh, people became the farm, and that was my first experience with Edgefield. 1969. Cool. <laughs> we remember and celebrate the saints who changed the world. Lauren McRae, Dale Gray, Harmon Ray, Moses Dillard, Joy Falk, Carol Feeney, Kitty Smith, Joyce and Don Byswinger, Fred Cloud, Ted McEachern. Judy Byswinger, Jim Zeralik, Margaret Howell. What other names? Ben Boyd. Sandy Hodge. Sandy Hodge. Dia Virginia. Dia and Virginia Bay. Changing the world. Martha and Hoyt Dittmer. Martha and Hoyt Dittmer. Yes. Will you love the you you hide if I but call your name? Will you quell the fear inside and never be the same? Will you use the faith you found to reshape the world around through my sight and touch and sound in you? This verse of the summons is so close to my heart. I have always heard it speaking to me of my, of my gayness, to the part of me that I hide from the world. Will you love the you you hide, if I but call your name? Will you quell the fear inside? Will you use the faith you've found to reshape the world around? When I came to this church, I had been out for a couple of years, and I moved to town with my girlfriend, Mary. 
By the time I found Angel, I had given up on my lifelong dream to be ordained. Um, since I was a little kid, I had always imagined that I would be in the church. And in those early days, I thought I would have to marry a preacher and I'd be the preacher's wife. And then when I was about 12, my dad introduced me to Margaret Marcy, who was a local pastor in Mangum, Oklahoma. And I realized then that women could do that too. And then in college, I came out and I was like, all right, the church's not going to want me. But I went ahead and went to divinity school just to find myself, you know. It's a very expensive little exercise. I could have got a book. <laughs> and I ended up in a field education placement over the summer at, at the Upper Room at a Live Now magazine, and I discovered that I loved editing. And so I got a job at the upper room. And lo and behold, I was working for the church. And one of the gifts to me of, of that job was that when they hired me, they knew I was gay. And so that was a community that was safe for me, even, even if I couldn't be myself out in the world or even in the magazine. That was a safe place for me. So there I was working for the church, and I thought, well, maybe I could be uh, in ministry. And there was this, there was a thing called diaconal ministry at that time. And so there was nothing in the in the discipline that said you couldn't be gay and diaconal. And so I, um, you know, that was just one of those technical things. But I went ahead and you know went through the process, and I became a diaconal minister, and then. I think four years later, they created the Order of the Deacon, and nearly, well, probably all the diaconal ministers went ahead and got ordained deacon, and they didn't really, we only had 30-minute interviews, so they didn't ask me, you know, any of those hard questions, and I always saw myself as coming into the deacon role in the middle of a herd, you know. <laughs> <laughs> But there was this calling, that calling to ritual, that calling to sacrament that had been there all along and that wasn't, wasn't living out. And I started acting it out in my job and here. And, and then they decided to let deacons be able to celebrate communion if you had permission from all the bishops in the whole area. And, and then just a few years ago, I thought, well, let me just ask, do people ever switch from deacon to elder? And sure enough, they said yes. And I went through that process. And then last November, I was ordained an elder. And I've been here in this place all of these years, being loved and being formed and being nurtured by you. And I'm so, so grateful. So when I came here in 79, this church was already a reconciling congregation, even though the program had not been created. Mm -hmm. um, back in the 70s, this, um, this church allowed the MCC church, which was a gay church, to meet here. And lo and behold, the annual conference heard about it, and somebody got upset, and they... Um, at, the, at the annual conference, they said, we needed to do a study of this. And so what happened in that year was that Hoyt Hickman led this congregation through a study of homosexuality and studied the Bible and talked. And, um, and I believe that was that point where this church became reconciling. And so when I was part of starting the reconciling program in 1984, it was this church and the model that you, we had used to study the issue that became what we gave to churches to say, here's how to study, how to become a reconciling congregation. So you, you, we were a footprint, we were a model for, for that movement that is still going um, today. And these days there are so many welcoming churches here in the Nashville area and I celebrate that and I honor the history of this congregation which has made a safe place for so many, for so many years, when there was no place of welcome, when there was no place to hold a funeral service for a person who had died with AIDS, when there was no place where a gay person could come and not be told they were going to hell, 
We remember and we celebrate the saints who made Etchel a welcoming place. Hoyt and Mark, Martha Hickman, Leo Rippey, Sandy Hodge, Arthur McBride and David Cotton, Al Weiss, Ed Stan, Paul Stevens. Lord, your summons echoes true when you but call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company I'll go where your love and footsteps show. Thus I'll move and live and grow in you and you in me. God is calling your name, inviting you to turn and follow and never be the same. And we're not alone on this journey. We're surrounded by the cloud of witnesses, the company of saints who have gone before and who surround us who walk with us, who pray on our behalf on those days when we are too overwhelmed or discouraged to pray. So this congregation is 55 years old and is still in ministry with this neighborhood. Those original founders wouldn't recognize this neighborhood with its changes and gentrification and God is still calling us. What is the path to which we're being called? May we always listen for God's voice summoning us by name. May we always follow and never be the same. May we move and live and grow within the Holy One. As we walk this path, we are not alone. We have the saints of Etchel. Y'all remember the crystals behind the screen? When they, when they shimmer in the sun, those are our saints surrounding us. We have the saints of our lives who share life with us and know our hopes and our dreams, our disappointments and our sadnesses. We have the saints and the prophets who continue to both trouble and encourage us. We are not alone. We are surrounded by love. Lord, your summons echoes true in you, but call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company I go, where your love and footsteps show. Thus I'll move and live and grow. And all of God's people said, Amen. 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 The people in the congregation this morning who have been here for many years have been blessed to remember the words that Beth has shared with us. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Beth. The new people here can rejoice with us now as they learn the history of this congregation, the flesh and blood of this congregation. Now my problem this morning is I was gonna say something about Beth and her relationship to Etchio, but she shared it all with us. <laughs> I got to thinking as she shared that I guess we have to die to become a saint, but that's not true. The pastor I worked with when I first came into the ministry, I visited a elderly woman in the hospital and she had arthritis in the worst way I've ever seen, in constant pain. And I came back to the office and said something to them. It was the most beautiful lady I had ever met. And he said, Dean, do you know what makes a beautiful old lady? I said, no. He said, a beautiful young lady. 
you don't become a saint. You are a saint because you're God's child, a beloved child. And so I thank God for Beth. I went to her ordination as a deacon at Clarksville. And because I, that was the first time I had gone back to an annual conference after having to leave as a pastor. And it inspired me, her devotion and her love to continue to stay in the Methodist Church mm -hmm. and to work in the annual conference. Mm -hmm. She's touched you in so many ways that we would be here for another year sharing the stories. But we want to say not goodbye to Beth. We want to recognize her life among us and her new relationship with that Western and your conference called the Mountain Sky Conference. That's the conference that has that sinful lesbian bishop <laughs> and her wife. God is with us in the hardest times of the journey. And when we look back at those hard times, we give thanks because it brings out the best of us. And so today we thank you, Beth, and we want to celebrate with you. I thank you, members and friends of Edge Hill United Methodist Church, for the love and support you have shown me while I have ministered among you. I'm grateful for the ways my leadership has been accepted, affirmed, and honored. As I leave, I carry with me all have learned here and a little piece of Edge Hill within my heart. Is there a response? Wait a minute, did you just say you're leaving? Did I miss the whole point of this? <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk later. <laughs> let, let us respond with the response on the screen. We receive your thankfulness and accept that you now lead in a service as a coronary elder in the United Methodist Church. We express our gratitude and deep love for you and the many years you have been with us. Your influence on our faith and faithfulness will continue in our lives and in the life of this congregation. I accept your gratitude and appreciation and trust that our time together and our parting are pleasing to God. I release you from turning to me and depending on me. I encourage your continuing ministry here and will pray for you, with you. I will pray for you and for you with, <laughs> excuse me. I will continue to pray with and for you throughout my life. I want to sing you a blessing. Um, you might hear this as God speaking to you. You are my beloved, on you my favor rests. Before you were imagined, I held your heart in mine. You are my beloved, for you my love grows deep. Before, behind, within you I live, and you are mine. Let us pray together. Eternal God, who steadfast love for us is from everlasting to everlasting, we give you thanks for cherished memories and commend one another in your care as we move in new directions. Keep us one in your love forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It is not written in the program, but on behalf of the congregation, and the pastor, I hug Beth. Our hymn is 377. It is well with my soul.
Stand as you are able and let us praise God. <laughs> Day is an occasion where we remember all of the members of this congregation who've gone before us, creating the rich ministry that Beth described so well in her sermon. We have the wonderful tradition of naming on All Saints Day all of the members of Edge Hill who have died since the congregation was formed in 1966. This book contains all of those members. If you don't have one, there's some over here and a few on the table in the back. Edge Hill does this act of remembering better than any congregation I've ever seen or heard about. It is such a wonderful lit liturgy, ritual, year after year, 
that helps us remember all of the saints. We all do a good job remembering those saints that we were closest to, family and loved ones. But as a body, remembering all of the saints reinforces our shared identity as the body of Christ known as HL. What we're going to do today is read, Beth and I will take turns reading five names of the saints. And at the end of the fifth, Dean will share his musical gifts with us on the bell. Um, and then at the bell, everyone says together, presente. That means present in Spanish. And as most of you know, we bring this tradition from Central America, where in the 1980s there was oppression, great oppression of the poor. Many of them simply disappeared at the hands of the authoritative government. Some Edge Hill members traveled to Central America with Witness for Peace to stand with the poor as the names of those who had been kidnapped and probably murdered were called out. And each name, as each name was read, the congregation would cry, Presente, they are here. So we do that this day because our saints are clearly here with us this day. And we'll begin with Sharon Abbey, Mike. A. Walt, D. F. Bain, Virginia Bain, Jack Balls. <laughs> Mary Nell Barefield, Sam Barefield, Reverend Bill Barnes, Nell Barnes, Bill Barnett. <laughs> Claire Bate, Don Byswinger, Joyce Byswinger, Judy Byswinger. Terry Wayne ben Bennett. Resistance. Larry Danny Bly, Evelyn Brooks, Annie Bell Brown, Jean Buchanan, Robert Burns. Resistance. Al Bice, Marjorie Campbell, Roy Campbell, David Cloud, Fred Cloud. Presente. Alice Cobb, David Cotton, Gloria Crutcher, George Crutcher, Dave Daniels. Presente. Presente. Moses Dillard, Rhoda Edmiston, Bill Edwards, Ernestine Edwards, Joy Falk. Presente. Presente. Carol Feeney. Pat Floyd, Phyllis Jean Flowers, Paul Ford, Elizabeth Gary. John Gaddis, Dale Gray, Bill Grundy, Annie Lori Hardy, Connie Harkey. Flora McKean, Marguerite Mitchell, Bruce Mosier, Dottie Mosier. Francis Nash, Barbara Northern, Elizabeth Parker, Dennis Parker, and Judy Parks. Presented. David Patton, Tay Phillips, Grace Dillard Pierce, Gregory Powell, Tom Ratcliffe, Valerie Richardson. Presented. Daisy and Leo Rippey, David Sebastina, Pernell Simpson, Christina Smith. Presente. Kitty Smith, Ed Stant, Paul Stevens, Milton Taylor, Francis Turner, Ernestine Thomas. Presented. James Forrest Thomas, Sybil Thompson, Thomas Walker, May Webb, Marvin Webb. Present. Clara Wilson, Myron Wingfield, 
Carmen Ray, Jackie Wright, Jim Zeralik, Linda Zeralik. Presented. We skipped a page. She skipped a page. And we continue. <laughs> Betty Hender Henderson, Eric Hendrickson, Hoyt Hickman, Martha Hickman, Mary Hickman. Presented. Sandy Hodge, Joe Hornaday, Margaret Howell, Louise House, Libby Jeffries. Presente. Presente. Frank Jarenko, Dale Ketchum, Alice Kowser, Barbara Lee, David Lewis. Presente. Lloyd Lewis, Lee Mackey, John Mac Martin, Arthur McBride, Laura McRae, Ted McEachern. At the end, we always take a moment to remember those that we carry in our hearts, family members and friends who have gone on. Let's take a few moments to remember those in our hearts, and then I will ring the bell three times. Each time, please respond with presenting because these are saints that we are remembering. Let us remember. Anita Cobb. signs of reconciliation and peace. May the peace of Jesus Christ be with you all.
Rail tubes and old stock and bibles. <laughs> it was fun. Miss Barbara.